G'day, Bill here from Sidereal Trading. You probably know we're the agent in Australia and New Zealand for Scope Dome. Now, Scope Dome is pretty much the best automated dome available, and we sell them to schools, universities, institutions, and a good number of amateurs. But as you can see, like this one, the Scope Dome is a big, heavy, and quite complex thing, and installing it is a multi-person job. The larger ones definitely require a crane in some stages. So, of course, people are often very intimidated when they're considering a facility like this. And we're getting very experienced at installing them ourselves, and obviously that's a service we offer. Most people who have had us do it are very pleased with their decision after watching us. Typically, it's a two-day build, and there are loads of details you need to know. Recently, we installed one outside Melbourne, and we set up a number of cameras to record the process. What you're going to see is mostly a series of stills with me voicing over, but you'll see some short video sections for when I had a spare hand. This one is a three metre scope dome, and just check out the location. There are several parts of the installation. First, the setup and, and preparation. Second, unpacking and layout. Next, constructing the ring, then adding the shutters and the wall, and last, the internal fit out. But first, let's have a look at where we are and what the site has to look like before we start. The scope dome is delivered to the location on a truck. Normally a crane truck, but if you've got a forklift that can operate safely in the area, we can accommodate that. The dome is in a weatherproof skin on a pallet, so it's simply lifted off and placed on the ground next to where it's going to be assembled. It's a morning start and we're just starting work. The dome is on its pallet next to the deck and the power is on. It'll also need an internet connection, either cable or wireless of some sort, but that doesn't have to be on for the installation. The deck has a concrete plug that anchors the pier that your mount will go on. In this case, the owner has had the deck and pier in place for a while. He's been using the pier for his Ioptron CEM120. You can put it on a pad, but this has to be very carefully levelled and you can get drainage problems, so we don't think it's the best option. Whichever way you go, this has to be complete before the dome goes up. The large box that comes with the dome has electronics, fasteners and other stuff you'll need. There are also large panels inside the cocoon, each individually wrapped, and it takes a lot of time unwrapping things and putting them in convenient places. Some of them are so large we can't get them out until later. Installing the base ring is the most complicated and time-consuming part of the whole task. The ring consists of three parts. The base ring, which we construct upside down before sealing into exactly the right position. The rotating ring, which rotates with the dome and has the rack that engages the rotation motor. We sometimes call this the slip ring. And the outer ring cover, which is the bit you can see on the outside of the completed dome. There's also an inner ring cover, but that gets installed later. We assemble the four equal sections of the base ring upside down, with the rollers pointing down. They're bolted together and sealed with silicone. Then, we very carefully turn it right way up. Next, we have to accurately place it so the pier is in the centre and the location for the azimuth motor is at the north. Now, what Diego is doing now is marking the position of the main ring so we can move it, add silicon and replace it in exactly the same position. Now we can lift it to put more silicone underneath it and then permanently screw it to the deck. Once that's done, we make sure the rollers are all level. Okay, what's the next stage? Next stage is connecting all the rollers to either positive or negative. They become the slip ring. Next we connect the parts using jumper cables. This ensures connectivity when the dome is in any position. 
Once the base ring is in place, assembled and cabled, we assemble the four equal parts of the rotating ring. The rotating ring has two aluminium plates inserted. One has teeth so the azimuth motor can rotate the whole ring, and another so the ring can be supported on the rollers. The supporting ring and the rollers are connected to the neutral power phase. It was about this point when we had a visitor. I think he was from the management team. When the rotating ring is attached, it's very important to leave the cables that rotate with the ring on the inside of the ring, and you'll see why in a second. The outer ring cover is for waterproofing as well as a bit of aesthetics. It comes in four pieces, but they're not even. It's got short pieces in north and south, and the longer pieces east and west. They're attached with silicone and bolts as normal. It's assembled upside down and then turned the right way up for installation. Cables that will go to the shutter control come between the rotating ring and the outer ring cover, and it's very important not to lose them. Finally, the reinforcing brackets are bolted on, and there are seven of those. Now we've got the ring assembly installed and tested, it's time to start building the dome superstructure. This doesn't take very long, but in parts it's a three-person lift, and that's just for the three-metre dome. Larger models, the four and five and a half metre dome, may need some sort of mechanical assistance. There are five panels. The first one is the front panel. In the southern hemisphere, this goes to the south, in front of your scope when it's in its home position. It's attached to the sandwiched outer ring cover and rotating ring using bolts and more silicone. Before we install the second panel, that's the left panel, which faces east, we put in yet more silicone. Then we bring in the left panel. This is heavy and we use suction grabbers that glaziers use. Third, the right panel, which faces west and which has the door, is even heavier. This is the heaviest part of the job and it's nice to see an empty pallet. The fourth, or rear panel, which faces north, is pretty simple, just more bolts and silicone. Unfortunately, I didn't get any shots of the shutter panel going in. We were all busy supporting it. The shutter panel, which is the part that moves up and down, has to be lifted into place and threaded between the fittings. The limit switches go in at this point as well. The last piece of the puzzle was the inner covers. These protect you from the rotating teeth in the rotating ring, and they're sharp. And that's it, for the outside at least. So that was the first day. Just to give you a recap, here's a time lapse of the whole day. Here's the base ring. Rotating ring. Lunch. Outer ring cover. You can see how much of the day we spend at the ring compared to the superstructure. It's important to get that right. Finally, the superstructure. So today's the second of the morning. We've finished the outside of the dome and it's time to do the inside. Now it can rain. Because we're working inside, there's less room, so I was able to do a bit of videoing. This part of the build is simply installing hardware, cabling and testing. We start with the shutter controller and the dome controller. Then the azimuth motor is bolted into place. It goes on the north side opposite the shutter when it's closed and there's an opening in the inner cover for the cog to engage the rack in the rotating ring. Once all the parts are hooked up, it's all about testing. Okay, so what we've got here is a three meter scope dome as installed. Here we have the main motor, and that is on the azimuth of the left and right, just rotates the dome. Above the, above the motor, this, this, this little guy here, this is the home sensor, and the, if I can reach over, this little guy here is the actual sensor, and it goes through, well, the, 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 the tab, and it goes through the sensor, and it tells when the, uh, t tells the, uh, the dome when it is and north-south. Yep, right, now we can see the, the rotation happening. Uh, see the mesh, meshing happening in there. It just goes nice and nice and quietly. You notice that the uh, that the home tab has disappeared because it's it, it moves with the dome, but the sensor hasn't. There you go. Now 
it doesn't it doesn't necessarily stop on the sensor. It, all it does is it tells the controller when it goes past. That way, the dome doesn't forget where it is. All right, next, uh, let's go up the top there. This is the shutter motor. That limit switch you can see up there, which I'll see if I can point out. This little guy here tells the tells the computer when the uh, when the aperture is fully open and it stops the motor. Moving down here, we'll see there's a limit switch at the other end of the uh, at, at, at the closed end of the aperture. So that that will limit switch will uh, limit switch will stop the shutter when it gets to the end. Very dark in here. It's gonna get very dark. Now you can see that the limit switch has tripped and it stopped the dome. There we go. It stopped. Okay. Here is a controller, the dome controller. It hasn't been actually installed yet. It can go in one of one of multiple places. It does not rotate with the dome, so it, it, it can either go with the, uh, with the dome motor or you can put it at the pier base where the power is. The dome controller controls pretty much everything and it's got a touch screen so you can control everything manually if you're in, inside the dome. There's the touch screen, thank you Gavin. Um, and yeah, it basically does everything and it's connected to all of the other parts of the dome. Uh, next thing up here, this is the uh, the shutter box, which basically just controls the shutter motor. Turns uh, it, it goes uh, basically opens and closes. I think that's really all there is to it. The door. Oh, okay. There's the door. Uh, the door is the door is um, out of a submarine, I think. <laughs> okay. So that's it for the installation. The owner has to take over here with our advice if he needs it. But there are so many ways to set up an automated dome. You're running the show, so what you do is pretty much up to you. The dome behind me is going to get shipped out soon, and that leaves room in the factory for the next shipment, so the cycle continues. I'm Bill Stent from Sidereal Trading. I'll see you next time.